Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly service from the United Parish of Kalinchi Kilmood and Tulna Kill. This week we begin with a musical interlude by our organ scholar Jack McCabe. He plays J.S. Bach's first movement of the trio sonata in E flat major. Thank you very much, Jack. That was absolutely wonderful. Now, our first hymn this morning is a paraphrase of Psalm 46, written by the Reverend Richard Buse in 1970 for family services at St. Peter's Church, Harold Wood in Essex. It was written for and sung to Eric Coates's Dam Busters March composed in 1954. It is the well-known God is our strength and refuge. Oh, sure, sure. 
we quieten our hearts and hear some words from Psalm 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. We confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you? I hope you're keeping well and enjoying being back at home school. Yes, the holidays are over and you're back in the classroom at home. Although I hope it's not too much work and that you're having some fun as well. I'm sure you're learning lots of new things. Today we have a VeggieTales episode on the book of Joshua. I hope you enjoy it. But before you enjoy that episode, we're going to sing a kids chorus. It is... God loves you and I love you, and that's the way it should be.
great singing boys and girls. Now look out for the Together at Home worksheet. There's lots of fun activities and games and some colouring in and a word search there. We hope you enjoy. Let us pray. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Daniel will read Psalm 48 for us. Psalm 48, Magnus Dominus. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God, even upon his holy hill. The hill of Sion is a fair place and the joy of the whole earth. Upon the north side lieth the city of the great king. God is well known in her palaces as a sure refuge. For lo, the kings of the earth are gathered and gone by together. They marvelled to see such things. They were astonished and suddenly cast down. Fear came there upon them and sorrow as upon a woman in her travail. Thou shalt break the ships of the sea through the east wind. Like as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts. In the city of our God, God upholdeth the same forever. We wait for thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. O God, according to thy name, so is thy praise unto the world's end. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let the Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Sion, and go round about her, and tell the towers thereof. Mark well her bulwarks, consider her houses, that ye may tell them that come after. For this God is our God for ever and ever. He shall be our guide unto death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much, Daniel. Claudia Clendinning will now sing the hymn version of Psalm 42 for us. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you.
Thank you very much, Claudia. Gail will now read from the book of Haggai. The Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Haggai. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your panelled houses, while this house lies in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages does so to put them in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build a house, that I may take pleasure in it, and that I may be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, declares the Lord of hosts, because of my house that lies in ruins, while each of you busies himself with his own house. Therefore the heavens above you have withheld the dew, and the earth has withheld its produce. And I have called for a drought on the land and the hills, on the grain, the new wine, the oil, on what the ground brings forth, on man and beast and on all their labours. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai the messenger of the Lord spoke to the people with the Lord's message. I am with you, declares the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of the Lord their hosts, their God, on the 24th day of the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. In the seventh month, on the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the hand of Haggai the prophet. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to all the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Is it not as nothing in your eyes? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts according to the covenant that I made with you when you come out of Egypt. My spirit remains in your midst. Fear not, for thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once more in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Lord God, you are faithful from generation to generation. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, that we may obey your will, live in safety under your protection, and abide in your love unto our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The weather has been glorious throughout this lockdown period. I can't remember the last time we had wall-to-wall sunshine like this. It has encouraged us to go out into the garden, breathe in the fresh air and bathe in the sunshine. Sunlight is an important source of vitamin D, a vitamin that some say could be helpful in the fight against the coronavirus. Sunlight is also good for our mental health and general well-being. Dear knows what the last number of weeks would have been like if it had been dull, grey and miserable. There have been other benefits too. The good weather has allowed us to do jobs around the house like weeding the gardens, fixing fences, planting and pruning, painting and decorating. I think when this is all over we would have plenty of entries for a best-kept garden competition. Sarah and I and the girls have been doing bits and pieces around the rectory. Our piece de resistance is the girls' Wendy house. It's in such good shape that it would fetch a good price on the open market. All of these home improvement projects have been good for us. They have distracted us from the crisis and helped us to focus our minds on other things. Today's reading from the book of Haggai is all about a building project the building of the second temple in Jerusalem in 520 BC. The first temple had been sadly destroyed 70 years previously by by the Babylonians, and the children of Israel had been taken into exile. However, at this point in Israel's history, the children of God had returned from exile and things were looking up. They were enjoying their newfound freedom and they were busy rebuilding their lives and dwelling places. But sadly, the rebuilding of the temple didn't feature much in their thinking. They had started out with good intentions 16 years earlier when they had returned from exile. They had commenced the rebuilding project, but due to their various cares and occupations, they had become distracted and the project remained unfinished. And so the prophet Haggai enters the stage with a word of rebuke and challenge to the Israelites. Is it a time for you to be living in your panelled houses while the house of the Lord remains a ruin? The basic problem was that the people had become so self-centred that they had forgotten what was truly important in the life of their community. But there was hope. God's Spirit was about to stir up his people again. Through the ministry of Haggai, key members of the community would start to show leadership. Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and Joshua, the high priest, what we might term leaders of church and state, took the lead. And the people followed. Encouraged by the word of God, be strong and work for I am with you, they started the sacred work of rebuilding and restoring the temple for their and succeeding generations. Spurred on by the promise of God in verse 9, that the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, and in this place I will grant prosperity and peace, they completed the task and the temple was rebuilt. And this brought much delight not just to Haggai, but to the whole community. Two and a half thousand years later, what might the application of this be for us in 2020 during lockdown? Well, as we rebuild and restore our properties and gardens, might we consider rebuilding and restoring our personal lives and relationships? Maybe this is the golden opportunity to assess where we are physically, mentally and spiritually. I have been really enjoying my daily walks with the girls, and once a week I've been doing a 40-minute endurance run. 
It has given me the opportunity to improve my physical fitness and to lose some weight. Spiritually, it has also been a refreshing time with opportunities for reading and meditating, resting and reflecting, and drawing near to God in prayer. Maybe the rebuilding of the temple will make us think about how we look at our own temples. After all, Scripture tells us that our bodies are to be temples of the Holy Spirit. And then there is the question of how we rebuild and restore our communities after this strange season of lockdown. How can we reconnect with each other? How can we revitalize community life? These are questions that we can ponder in the coming days and weeks. But it strikes me that we can start the process of rebuilding our lives and communities now, even as we remain in lockdown. We can lift the phone or send a text message or do a video call. We can connect with each other in so many new and novel ways. And as we do so, let us not underestimate the importance of what we are doing. An apocryphal story from the building of St. Paul's Cathedral might help. It is said that Sir Christopher Wren visited the construction site one day. He began to move around the site and ask those involved what they were doing. He stopped with a master mason who was measuring and cutting some stone. Wren asked, what are you doing? The master mason replied, can't you see I'm measuring and cutting stone? And then continued going about his business. Wren went a little further and asked the chief carpenter, what are you doing? Can't you see, said the chief carpenter, I'm measuring and cutting wood. And he went about his business. Finally, Wren came to a poor lowly labourer who was clearing up after the master mason and the chief carpenter. And Sir Christopher Wren asked him, What are you doing? And the labourer replied, I'm glad you asked that question. We are here building a temple to the glory of God. As the sun shines on us in this peculiar season of lockdown, let us not underestimate the work of rebuilding our lives and our communities. It is a work for the glory of God. Amen. Let us pray. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen communities of faith throughout the world as we seek to help and support one another in this strange season of lockdown and build us up in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, look with favour on the world you have made. Guide and direct the nations as they seek to find solutions to the coronavirus problems. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, and all in authority under her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our relationships, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work. Help us to love our neighbours as ourselves. Enable us to serve our families and friends and to love one another as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, relieve and protect those who are sick or suffering at this time and be with those who seek to care for them, especially those who work in the National Health Service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all kindness, hear the prayers which we offer to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, grant that the desires of your people's hearts may find favour in your sight through the intercession of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I hope you have enjoyed our service. Our thanks to Daniel, Gail, Jack and Claudia for their part in the service. And remember, if there is anything you need, do not hesitate to contact either me, the rector, or your point of contact on the select vestry. Let us pray. 
Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen.